Hello everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Martha. I'm a relationship counselor and clinical sexologist. And today is the 23rd of April 2020 in Singapore. And um, it has been three days since the 11th anniversary of my company. So yeah, I've been in practice for 11 years now. Uh, working with individuals, couples who have all kinds of sexuality, relationship challenges. And um, it really dawned on me that a lot of people are having a really difficult time. Um, many people that I know of, they are experiencing anxiety about the future, about the unknown. And there are people who are starting to feel really depressed. And um, I'm actually at a really good place because I am enjoying the time I have to take a break from seeing clients face to face. It's a very different energy working with clients face to face and online. And a lot of my clients do prefer to work with me face to face. I also prefer to work with clients face to face. I have come to a point in my practice where I don't agree to see clients on the phone, um, even a 10 minute call, because I pick up much more energetically and also through nonverbal, uh, through their body language, I can tell a lot more what they are saying, what they are meaning, what they are feeling. And so I really get that um, not just myself, but I think people around the world, they are really missing this energetic, emotional, physical contact that they have with people. And when we are with, by ourselves and with ourselves a lot, um, how do we handle things? Because there are people who have office jobs who actually are used to a routine and suddenly you take that away from them and they are thrown into working at home. It's one thing working at home, it's another thing if you're trying to work at home around the other things that um, have a place and time. Like for instance, work, trying to work at home when your kids are there, trying to work at home, your spouse is sharing the same table with you. And I get that there's a lot of um, challenges and adjustments but I also believe in the capacity of us to adapt and the human mind is such that we are capable of rewiring ourselves and the reason why it feels so uncomfortable is because we are used to a routine and we crave routine actually so in a time when the things that you are used to are taken away from you, it is important to create new routines, things that you can control. Um, looking at your calendar and blocking out your day and knowing what you can accomplish realistically, what are the must and what are the like to do. And um, this is what I have to share about um, people who have difficulties with um, what is happening, feeling anxious and feeling lonely. Um, there are things we can control and there are things we cannot control. So the first thing is to control what you can control, yourself, your emotions, your time, how you manage your time, how you communicate with your partners or kids around boundaries and allocating time working with the constraints and resources that you have and on the things that you cannot control, I do have this um, affirmation that I use a lot, which is um, I do my best, I let go of the rest. I do my best, I let go of the rest because you can only do so much. And then there are times when I don't do my best, I can't do my best. I'm not willing to do my best. I'm too tired to do my best. So that's when I tell myself, 
doing something is better than doing nothing. So I try something, I do it part of the way, I don't do it the 30 minutes that I need, I do it only 10 minutes, but I'm proud of myself because I did do something rather than do nothing. And um, another one that I tell myself is when I try, I win. When I try, I win. Because we, we, we are so hard on ourselves and we have very clear black and white of what is right and wrong, what is a win and what is a shoot, what is a must. And that stops us from trying. So what if we cannot fail? Then we will try. So what if we tell ourselves that we win when we try? Then we are more likely to try. So can you see one way of thinking sets you up for failure, which is it's not going to work anyway. Why do it if it's not going to succeed? Or I don't know when I'm going to succeed. Another one is, well, I win when I try. When I try, I get better. When I get better, um, I get closer to what I want. So the way you think um, and being in control of your thoughts will help you with your anxiety, with the fear of the unknown and the fear of what you cannot control. So this is the second tip that I have for you. The first one is block out your time, do what you can. The second one is manage your thoughts. And um, you start by telling yourself the things that make you feel better and stronger rather than things that make you feel weaker and disempowered. It's like putting poison into your own body. And the third thing that um, I wanted to um, share with you is um, become friends with, with yourself. Um, people who are used to being with people, people who are used to being busy, they get really uncomfortable with not being busy, with being by themselves because it's, Again, not what we are used to. This is not our personality. This is not our routine. This is not the things that we are used to doing. Let me share a, a personal story. There was a time that I was very uncomfortable with being by myself and I was running away from myself. I was scared of being alone. Um, there was a time I, I, I was doing things that were not really healthy for me. I, there was a time in my life, as you can tell, it's very difficult for me to share this story. Um, there was a time when I was uh, married. Uh, this was when I was much younger. I was 25 when this happened. Um, my ex-husband was working overseas and I realized that the marriage was coming to an end and I was really scared to go back home uh, alone and I didn't want to be by myself. So I would go out a lot, hang out with friends and, and I would get really scared being by myself at home. Like even the dripping of the tap water would freak me out. Every single sound around the house would scare me because I would think is there a robber. And of course, the very typical fear of what if I die in my sleep, who is going to find my body? Um, I had to confront those fears as well. And I realized that I was wasting a lot of money going out. I ran out of friends to go out with. I was going out, coming back late. I was making myself exhausted and tired. I realized that I really had to do the very thing that I was afraid to do, because if I if I keep running away from myself um, and distracting myself, making myself tired, it's really counterintuitive. The very thing that I'm trying to run away from is the very thing that will keep coming back to haunt me and will eventually catch up with me. So I could keep running away from myself or just confront my deep, deepest pain and fear. And it wasn't easy. Um, so I tried to negotiate and look at what was really happening, which is I didn't have much money. I came, I was going back to an empty house. I could sleep early instead of coming back late and then needing to work the next day. So what I did was I had a gym membership at that time, which I couldn't terminate. So I went to the gym every day after work. 
I made myself really tired. I went back home and I sleep early so that I don't have to um, engage in negative behavior. And over time, I made friends with the darkness and I wasn't scared of being by myself in the house. And I started to explore doing things that I really like by myself. I went back to reading and over time, I really started to enjoy my own company more and more. And the separation between being alone and being lonely became more and more separate. And I slowly but surely became my own best friend. And the irony is I am an introvert and I'm very sensitive and I do need alone time. Um, but when it is being forced onto you, a lot of times you want to resist it. And the third tip that I have for you is as you're going into the unknown and forced to be alone, look at it for what it is because as much as you are stuck in the house, you are, as you probably know, are not alone. Everybody around the world is uh, in some way or another in their house and uh, they are also alone. Uh, all it takes is a phone call, a WhatsApp message to realize that there are people around you who care about you. So instead of distracting yourself, making yourself tired, how about taking this opportunity like I did many, many years ago to become my own best friend, to enjoy my own company, to see the good in this so as I mentioned, I am seeing clients online and I am actually uh, doing uh, Facebook groups, different things to support people. I list all that below. And I'm also developing uh, programs. I am taking online learning. Uh, there's lots of things you can do, many of them that are free. And before you know it, time will fly by and you may look at what has happened and actually may have regrets like, oh, I could have used that time better, but I was so busy being stressed. I don't want to shame you because what you're feeling is what you're feeling. And there's a time and place for everything. And if you are familiar with the five stages of grieving, I think it is really important to come into acceptance and different people um, arrive at it at a different rate. Um, I just want to plant that seed that uh, try to push yourself just that little bit to go into discomfort so that you can grow. And growth can happen quickly once you take the first step. And being a coach, with my coach training, I'm also a counselor, by the way, so I have coaching counseling training and there's a lot of contention about which is better. I don't want to get into it. Um, but with my background in coaching, what we do is we always look at people where they're at, where they want to go, and then we support them to break it down into smaller steps. So what might be a small step you can take now that I've shared my story on how I, I had to confront my shadow, my darkness, my fear of being alone and really embrace being alone and uh, not necessarily feeling lonely because I've had a lot of practice over the years. I, I went through this difficult time in my life with my first marriage and I became an entrepreneur. I became a coach counselor. I spent a lot of time by myself as an introvert. So really this time doesn't affect me as much as the people around me. In fact, I'm, I'm really thriving. I'm really doing really well because I'm enjoying this time. I mean, sure, there is the uncertainty of how long this is going to be and whether I'm going to run out of money. I do have fears too. 
However, it is really important for me to take care of uh, myself, my ability. So, so yeah, this is uh, Martha just sharing with you the three things that I think will be really useful for you. The first one is to control what you can, uh, your time, your schedule, to fill up your time, look at your calendar, the things that you must do, navigate the constraints. The second one uh, being to manage your thoughts, some of the affirmations I've given to you. The third one is to take this time to be your own best friend. So this is Martha sharing with you um, what I feel inspired to share from the heart. And I hope this is useful. I have shared some resources in this link below. Please, please use it. It's a gift by me to you. And I love to have your feedback and comments. Please take care of yourself out there. I know that there are people who are lonely, who are anxious, who are depressed. Please don't buy into that lie that you're alone. Uh, those of you who are spiritual will know that uh, God is a prayer away, that your angels, your saints are around you, protecting you. Um, being a spiritual person, uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot in this world that we may not know about. And uh, whatever it is, I just want you to know that I, I love you and I have a lot of empathy for what you're going through. And um, reach out to a loved one because um, these are the people who um, you, can, you, can, you can support as well. Um, and it is a gift to be in a position to support other people. So take care of yourself so that you can support the people around you. So this is Martha of Eros Coaching and I really like to encourage you to sign up for my mailing list and it's uh, eroscoaching.com. That's where I share um, all my latest news and updates, articles, interviews, webinars, podcasts that I'm in and things like that. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. Bye.